In this video, we will learn about data fetching in Next.js 13. And we will also take a look on suspense boundaries and how you can use those to enable granular loading of your UI. So let's dive in. So over here, I have a fresh Next.js project open. And let's start by getting rid of the pages folder because we won't need that. And then let's create a page inside of an app folder. And from there, let's just export a function like this. And let's try to start the server. And by the way, if you didn't already watch the video I made about the app folder, explaining how it works and how the routing in the new app folder works, uh, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. But yeah, let's start the dev server. Okay, we are getting an error and it's saying that we need to enable the experimental app folder because it's at the time still experimental. So let's do that. We just add to the Next.js config this experimental property. Now let's try to start the server again and then switch to the browser and try to open up the page. Okay, great. So we get the hello text, so everything is working. And for this application, I was thinking that let's create this kind of small dashboard that shows some user data and some company's data. So that way we can demonstrate how to fetch data and also how to use the suspense features. So let's start by going back to the VS code. And as we can see here, Next.js created for us this root layout file. So here I'll just add a header over here saying that dashboard like this and yeah it appears over there great then let's go to the page js and define the users and companies sections in here so let me do that okay so here i added some code so i made two columns that first one displays the users and the second one displays the companies over here so let's save it and see how it looks so this is kind of our dashboard view. So on the left, we have the users and companies on the right. Now, as we can see, we are just uh, inserting some static data over here in the code. So what we actually want to do is fetch the users from an API and then fetch the companies from an API. And before we do any fetching, you can probably tell that these could be their own components. So let's add a users component and companies component. And thanks to the new app folder structure, we don't have to create any components directory and put them in there, but we can just add the components straight into the app folder and use them from there. So let's start by adding the users component. And inside here, I just export a function and let's paste in the code we created. So from here, like this and then inside of the page let's import that component and then use it like this and let's save it and see how it looks so nothing changed everything is still working great let's do the same for the companies so i add a new file to the app folder called companies then export a function and then copy the code from the page so over here and paste it in and then in the page I import the component and let's display it. Save it and check the browser. Looks like everything is working great. So now we can start working on the data fetching. And where are we going to fetch the data? Well, I have an API running on localhost which one endpoint returns some users data and then another endpoint returns some company's data over here. So let's start with the users. So I'll open the users component over here. And with Next.js 13, we can actually just define the fetching logic right here in the component, which is great in my opinion, because it's right there where you need it and you don't have to 
uh, hide it or bury it in some other functions or some other files. So it's as easy as just defining a new function up here. And then inside of here, we can use fetch to fetch the data. So let's do that. And the URL, let's copy that. So it was there and paste it in. And then, oh, let's add a weight like that. And then just return the rest.json like this. Then inside of the component up here, we can call that function. So let's do that. And let's add a sunk over here. Great. And now inside of this uh, list, let's loop those users and display some data like this. So we are just adding a list element for each user. Save it and let's switch to the browser and go to our web page. And looks like users map is not a function, but let's refresh the page and we still get the error. So let's see what's happening over here. Oh, I made a mistake because the users are coming in a variable called users. So let's do this over here. So in the API, we can see it returns an object with users over there. So let's try this now. So save it and switch to the browser, refresh the page. And yeah, what do you know? There we have some user data displayed. So let's do the same for companies. So inside of the companies component, at the top, I will define that get data function. And inside of the function, I will use fetch to call the API and then return the JSON like this. And then inside of the component, I will call that function and let's add the async. And then let's map through those companies and show some data like this. And oh, we need to add this one over here too like this. So let's save it and then switch to the browser. So now we have the dashboard and on it, we have the users on the left and some companies on the right. That's great. So that's how easy it is to do data fetching with Next.js 13. So we just need to add the uh, fetching function up here and then call it inside of the component. Let's take a look on how we can make this even more user friendly. So what I will do is actually stop my dev server and go to the browser, refresh the page. So we see the site can't reach page and then fire up my server again and then refresh the page. So now, and you can see it takes a little bit of time before it displays the page. And that is because the company's endpoint actually takes two seconds to load the company data and then return it. So the application is waiting the API for two seconds before it gets the data from the API. And for the user's endpoint, it takes roughly one second to return the data. So the application is not rendering anything before it gets all of this data. And one thing we can do is add a loading indicator in our application. So if we add a new file to the app folder called loading, and export a component out of it like this. And then if we again stop the dev server, switch to the browser, refresh it, and then start the dev server and try to refresh the page. So take a look what happens. So the server is running, then the browser, refresh the page. As you can see, it actually shows the dashboard heading and then the text loading and once the loading is done, it will display the users and companies. So this is much better already. And how this works is that if we take a look on our layout over here, so Next.js will right away serve this layout and the heading from it. But then as a children, we have the page, which has some loading to do inside of those components. So by adding the loading component inside of the app folder, we can show a custom loading indicator while these components are being rendered or while the data is being loaded. So that's one new feature of the Next.js 13 that we can add these special files called uh, loading. There are a bunch of others also. You can check the documentation for those. So there is, I think, also error and template and maybe some other, but at least the loading is for the loading indicator. So Next.js 13 detects that, okay, 
this component is still loading, so let's show the loading indicator. This is good, but we can make this even better because if the users take only like one second to load and then companies take two seconds to load, wouldn't it be better to show the users as soon as they are loaded and then the companies as soon as they are loaded? Well, yeah, so let's do that next. And how we can do this is with uh, suspense boundaries. So let's go to our page.js and I will start by importing suspense from React like this. And then I will use it and the suspense takes a prop called fallback which is a component that will be displayed while data is loading. You will see it in a second. So for this I will just add a div saying loading users like this and then I will move these users inside of here like this. Then I will do the same for the companies like this. So let's save it and see what happens. So we are on the dashboard and now if I refresh the page You can see it first displays loading users, loading companies, and as soon as the users are loaded, so the API returns the data, it will render the users list while the companies list is still loading. So let's try that again. So I will refresh the page. So it shows the loading users and then loading companies. So this way user right away sees the dashboard and some loading indicators that data is loading and then when any part of that data is fetched it will automatically be displayed right away rather than waiting all the other requests to also complete before rendering the page. So let's try out changing these users out of that suspense call. So now the users is not inside of the suspense boundaries. I'll save this and Let's try to refresh the page. And as you can see, it first shows the pages loading text that came from the loading indicator we defined here. And after the users are fetched, then it will display the users, but still be loading the companies because the companies was inside of a suspense boundary. But let's move these users back inside of that suspense boundary and save it and refresh the page. So you can see it displays the both loading indicators right away and when the users are fetched, displays them and when the companies are fetched, displays them. So this is how you use the suspense boundaries inside of an XS13 application. I hope this video was helpful and please let me know in the comments what you think of this and if this video was helpful. And also if you are not already, please hit the subscribe button below too.